Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another Gemini Scale Model Works video. This is going to be part three of my big rig group build. But before we get into that, I want to make you know that I have my new shop cards available. If you want one, uh, my email address is in the description as always. Uh, if you also want a little glimpse of what I do on my Model Railroad channel, you can look, look at that on the back side of my cards. So if you would like to have one, I would love to send you one. Just go, go ahead and uh, email me with your information and I'll get one out to you. Alright, so now let's get back to the group build. I'll show you what I did on the chassis. I'll show you what I did on the engine. And I'll tell you what kind of updates I'm going to do to this group build model. But all that being said, let's get on with this video. We'll be right back. Okay, boys and girls, welcome back to part three of my big rig group build sponsored by Jeff's Model Garage. Anyhow, in the last video, I thought for sure we were going to put wheels on this thing and carry on from there, but um, I was so wrong, and that's because I didn't look at all the instructions. So, as you can see right here... <coughs> We have completed all that, which I have shown you in the last video. What I didn't know is all of this stuff down here needs to get done now. <laughs> and these are the uh, air brake uh, boots or ca actuators or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build these today. We're also going to put all the shock absorbers on today. <laughs> and if we get time, we'll stop doing some more work on the engine. This side is pretty much complete. I just got to put the dipstick uh, dealy mabobber right there and then everything else will be on this side of the engine. So, I am going to try something on this model that I have not tried on any model uh, so far. Uh, and also on one of my ships I'm going to try something that I have not tried so far. But you'll see if, uh, if I can get it worked out, you'll see what I'm talking about later on. Anyhow, we're going to start this by putting these guys together. Now, these guys are specific to where they got to go, and I'll show you why. I already put one together, and you can see it right here. Uh, the airbags or the actuators go towards the front of the vehicle. So that's how it has to be on the rear on this side and then also on the other side have to face towards the front. And then these guys, when, uh, when these get assembled, because they are not assembled, uh, then I will put the bellows or the actuators on. Now the only difference is on the front ones, it says, that what they're calling these cylinders, okay? I will go with that. We'll call them cylinders also. Let me get this over so you guys can see what I'm talking about. On the front uh, air brakes, they want to put two large and two small. And they want the smaller ones closest to the bracket. So in other words, they want this and they want this to go like that. And then mount it onto, yeah, let's see if I can get that off of there. And then mount it onto this guy, like that. And so that's what the air brake, and it looks kind of weird and big, but I'm doing exactly what they say to do. For me, I would just put the small, I just put these, these bigger ones on, and blow it out from there. I think it looks a lot better with just, just one. But I'm gonna do what they say, so. 
And these will get, I don't know what color these are going to get painted yet. I guess they are rubber, so they should be a rubber color. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put these all together. And like I said, they are size specific. And these guys will not go into both of these holes. They'll only go into one hole. So if I try to put it in that one, it'll go, as you can see. But now if I try to go in this one, it'll probably go. Watch. Uh, yeah, look at that. On this one, it made a liar out of me. Also, another thing to notice is that that groove down on the bottom, that faces down and it lines up with a, 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 an alignment pin on all the axles. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start putting all this stuff together and I'll bring you back when they are all mount, painted and mounted. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, guys, as you can see, I have six brand new Monroe shock absorbers. I just got to paint the very tips of those right now, and then these will be done. Uh, but we're going to carry on now and care and paint up the uh, the backing plates. So you can see I have them covered up right there. I was going to spray them, but I don't have the color I want to spray them with, so I'm just going to go ahead and hand paint these. Shouldn't take very long. <clears throat> Anyhow, let's see, there's a little piece on here that needs to go away. Yeah, okay. So now, like I said, I'm just going to hand paint these. I got some in my, my palette right here. What I'm using is oily steel. I just want to put a whole bunch of different colors in here that kind of work together with all the steel colors. So here we go. This this side we want to paint. This uh, this paint is really thick. Now we only have to paint the outside, this part right here, because that's the only part you're going to see. Anyhow, I'm going to do this one on camera, and then I'll do the rest off camera so you guys don't have to get bored watching me paint <clears throat> paint around the outside here because I don't know how much of this you're actually going to see and there you go oily steel as compared to the white now, I'm not going to worry about the center because that's where we have to glue it and all of this will be inside the wheel, so you won't see that either. So, that's one. Okay, we'll be back when all the rest of them are done. Be right back. Okay, guys, I have a few parts that are uh, drying up paint right now. But I do have these shock absorbers that we can put in. Um, I'm going to try and do this where you guys can see it. But, let's see if I can get my heavy duty finger here I have to get the shock into that hole right there and then it'll line up on the bottom of the uh, 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 swing arm or whatever you want to call it so with that being said we're going to use this black uh, CA cement I think, I think it works pretty good when it's paint on paint I don't really like doing that but And, of course, I don't have nothing to apply this with. So, we're just going to put some right on there. Alright, now, now the trick is to get it into that hole without everything moving. So, let's give it a shot. Wow! <laughs> First try! Woohoo! I'm happy about that one. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can bend this over a bit more. Let's see, I'll turn it. And then I can bend it down. So you can see it. There you go. Look at that. 
It's right in there. Yeah, buddy, and this just fell out of the thingamabobber. Come on. Get in there. There you go. All right. So, we got another one to do on this side, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. And also, I got the actuators all painted up. They are painting in a camo brown. And I am going to attempt, and I use that word very loosely, attempt to drill some holes in here and possibly, possibly run some lines for airlines. We'll see. I did look up the uh, air hose schematic, and let me tell you something, it's more complicated than everybody thinks it is. <laughs> All right, so... Get back to the task at hand. We'll pick up another another one of my uh, shock absorberations here. Where does this one gotta go? Let me see. Uh, right there. Right there's the hole. Let's see, it's just coming out of here again. I don't wanna squeeze it too much in this clamp thingy. <laughs> Why did I break the whole thing? After all my work, I'd kill myself. <laughs> Alright, let's, um, let's do this again. I need to move it so I can see the hole. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so we will hold that there. And we'll glob this on here, and hopefully, hopefully this will go in as easily as it went into the other one. So, here we go. Well, I don't believe that. <laughs> and all I gotta do now is when this, when these set up here, I'll flip it over and on the bottoms where they hook into the uh, trailing arms or sway arms or whatever you want to call them, um, we'll glue those in over there. Now, I have to look at the instructions to see how the front ones go. So we'll hold off on the front ones, we'll get the rear ones done first, and then we'll carry on from there. Now, these are also all painted up, ready to go. So, in the meanwhile, while this is drying, I will start putting these guys together. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys. Um, part rookie mistake and part instruction mistake. And I'll explain to you what's going on. When I was putting these guys together, which are the uh, air brakes, uh, bellows or actuators, whatever you want to call it, all they said was to take this part and put it into this part and it has to face towards the front of the vehicle uh, on the outside. They did not say, however, that instead of putting it up close and personal, that there should be a little bit of space in there. The reason for that is because when I put the wheels on, if it was in this position, the wheel won't go on. It would hit it. Just like that. And that's without the tire on there. So. I tried to take these apart using the glue method. And some of them worked. Like that one worked. And this one worked. Some of them didn't work however. And some of the pins that got just in there broke off. So what I did was. I just added. A spacer behind there and that seems to work but <clears throat> I'm going to try something on this and I mentioned this earlier in this video I'm going to try something on this vehicle um, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work or if I'm wasting my time or whatever but I want to see if I can do it so anyhow <clears throat> speaking about the air brakes it needs an air supply. So, 
here is my compressor and it will be going on the engine here pretty soon but I had decided that because it needs air to work the brakes I am going to do <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at this I am going to do this and then you gotta bring it in a little bit now I don't intend to do everything that's on this page what I am going to do however is this is my compressor right here and I'm not going to install this tank but when I get on to the next part of this I'll show you what's going to happen so instead of going to the dryer and going to this tank here we're going to go directly from the compressor to this tank and from this tank we're going to go to this tank I think yeah anyhow oh well, maybe not I'm not sure about this tank yet we'll see yes we are I I'm sorry I'm getting confused here because we're gonna add another tank onto this vehicle and I'll explain that here in a minute anyhow we're gonna follow the green line and the green line is gonna go back here now I have to make this valve right here this is a six-way valve that I have to make here so it will go from the tank up to the brake pedal which in actuality is a switch and when you depress that the air will go this way and into this valve and actuate the brakes now the green is just the service brakes the yellow is the secondaries in case the first unless you really have to hit the brakes hard then it opens up the second valve here uh, and then the second tank I'm going to use to go to the front brakes now the airbags <laughs> I mentioned that the kit gives you two tanks but to do what I want to do I need three tanks so what I did was my other Peterbilt that I am not going to be building I stole a tank from there and that's going to be my third tank now the reason why I need a third tank is because this is the airbag system so it comes on the compressor to the air tank and then out to the uh, in individual airbags and if you notice <clears throat> this has got four outlets on it already so that's going to be cool now I did purchase from this Protec company this braided line it's 18 thousandths and that is really really tiny this will be my airbag line and I already drilled two holes in the back of the compressor and this one if I can see the damn hole we'll go into the compressor like that and I'll route it out to this tank right here and then from this tank it will go to the airbags <coughs> then the second thing is I ordered more of that cable only a little bit bigger and that'll go from this bottom hole to feed the air brakes. Now that all of that has been said, let's see if I could actually do this. <laughs> uh, and also we're gonna do something similar to the, uh, the fuel system. So with all that being said, I am just waiting to get the braided line and I've ordered T fittings and, 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 and uh, the connection fittings and all of that stuff. So we'll see how this is all gonna come together. Be right back. Okay guys and gals, we are back down at the workbench and I will show you what's been accomplished so far. The rear suspension is totally complete. All my shock absorbers are in there, my trailing arms are mounted on the top and all of that good stuff. All the drive shafts are in and uh, everything is looking really good there. Now, problem I have, well I don't know if it's a problem, maybe because I just can't figure it out yet, but where they're telling me to mount the front shocks don't make any sense to me <laughs> being a mechanic it just doesn't make any sense and first of all the shocks are not big enough not long enough to do what they say they say and from what i can understand from the uh instructions they want to mount shock here 
on the axle, which makes sense there, but it, they want to mount it to here. It's not long enough to do that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the front shocks. Anyhow, I'll figure that out as the time goes on. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is my engine. I don't know if it's a Cummings, a Cummings, or a Caterp Caterpillar, but it is complete. And what I did here, again, like I showed you guys previously on the compressor, which is right there, I drilled the two holes in the back. I also did the same thing for the fuel pump and the fuel filters. So as you can see, the fuel filters are here. This would be the outside going into the fuel pump. And from the fuel pump, it goes out into uh, under the covers where the injectors are. Now, I told you guys I was waiting for the cable, and that is this cable right here. And it is uh, 35 thousandths in thickness. 125 says fuel line. So, this will be my main feed line for my air brakes. So, what I'm saying is this guy here will go into the back of the compressor and then be routed out to one of the tanks and from the tanks it will go out. Now, I was explaining to you guys that I want to do pretty much the entire brake line system. And I also mentioned that I had to build or yeah, build a uh, distribution block. And so here is my distribution block. The center will be the in and the four corners will be the outs. Now I'm not quite sure where I'm going to mount that. It's going to be in the chassis on the side rail someplace. I also, I don't know if you guys are going to see that, but I also drilled a hole in there. I got to touch up with paint. So I could run my cables through there. Anyhow, with all that being said, I'm going to call this video good for now. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed it. And as always, your questions, comments, inputs, subs, shares, and likes are always welcome. For now, that's all, folks. Gemini Scale Model Works out for now. Bye.